Hello, Thursday, it's Phil here live with another Thursday Q&A live from the Digital DJ Tips studio. We have got so much going on at the moment, it's unbelievable. We are just finishing our latest DJ course, which is Serato DJ 3 Made Easy, with all the latest stuff of Serato in that course, which we're really excited about. Then we've got one more day of filming and then we've got to go into all the other stuff that happens before we launch a new course, but you can expect that in the next two or three weeks, which is really exciting. Also, we've got um, lots of changes going on on the website. You might have seen our new look homepage uh, with all our courses, big front and center on it, but a nice big banner to get you back to the, the blog, which is not changed at all. It's all exactly as it always has been, but uh, that's all exciting. And also we've got some giveaway action going on. If you wanna win these speakers, which are incredible, $2,000 worth a pair of IK Multimedia iLoud Precision 5, then head over to the digitaldjtips.com website. It's a free draw. You can click here and enter this um, draw to find uh, out whether you've one. Uh, we'll be announcing that next Tuesday. Uh, however, I also have to tell you that we haven't got any more of these live shows for a couple of weeks. Uh, we're having a little bit of a break, so I'm not going to be here next week or the week after. So um, it's going to be three weeks time, two weeks time from today. Yeah, one, two, no, three weeks time from today when I'm next here to do another, another Thursday and uh, we'll be back Tuesday that week as well. So a couple of weeks break coming up. However, doesn't stop us today helping you with as much as we can. We've got Serato set up unsurprisingly in the studio because we've been doing a lot of this final filming of the Serato course. I've actually been looking at Serato video today uh, and, uh, and how all this stuff works. I haven't done this for a little while, so that's been exciting for us, playing with Serato video and making some training on that. But we've also got, of course, gear, music, techniques, promoting yourself, anything you want help with, anything that's in the book. You get a free copy of the book, by the way, if you haven't seen this, you might be new, you might be someone who hasn't seen this, you get a free copy of the book whenever you sign up to Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading DJ school for free. It's worth signing up with us because you get our newsletter every week and you also get offers. Like, for instance, we will give you the offer on the new course, the Serato course, it's about to go live before anyone else gets it. So come grab your free copy of the book, you just head over to the Digital DJ Tips website and then click anywhere where it says join and we'll get you one uh, straight away. So uh, join at the top there would be a good place to start to become our latest member. Right, I am here now. I'm Phil. I'm the owner of Digital DJ Tips, the founder of Digital DJ Tips, and I'm here now basically for the next, I'm going to stay here for about half an hour today because my throat's a bit bad. I've been struggling all week and I've, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got to try and give it a rest, give myself a chance to feel better. So I'm going to be here for half an hour today, but I'm going to answer as many of your questions about your DJing as I possibly can in that half an hour. So we've got uh, the chat window open here. Uh, as some of you know, who are our regulars, I have all the questions from all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch all coming in here and I can uh, answer them wherever you ask. So wherever you're watching this today, Ask away, I'm here to help. Hello to all our regulars. Keshia, Mixmaster G, Tony, Robert, Charlie, The Ruckus, Catherine Catsgroove, Stuart, Paul, uh, Java Man, and everyone else saying hello early on. Nexus, Juicy, Jermaine. Jermaine's got our first question of the day, so thank you, Jermaine. Jermaine says, I've been asked to DJ a party, and the person requested a lot of the top 40 hits from the 2000s. Do you know where I can look to see top hip hop and pop and house hits from the 2000s? And Google is definitely your friend here. You can just Google literally what you just said and you will find list after list. Also, look in your streaming service. If you're not a DJ who is a subscriber to a streaming service, you really should be. It's the best way to discover music nowadays. And there'll be playlists of 2000s hip hop, um, you know, uh, the decade, just select the decade name and, and, and whatever genre you, you want and you'll find hits there. I'm a big fan of the, now that's what I call music albums. That's my age showing here. I've actually got a book here. One of my, I've got so many cool DJing books from so many cool people. One of my favorite books is the Now That's What I Call Music book, which is, this was a compilation album. I think they had them in the States as well in the end, but they were certainly in the UK uh, where, um, they basically release two or three a year with all the biggest hits on them. And uh, these are worth looking back at. You can buy these CDs like for nothing on eBay uh, and go back and buy the old CDs and you get like, you know, 40 hits from a particular year for like 
three dollars or something they're great rip them get me into your digital collection anyway Jermaine I hope that helps I'm sure other people will have suggestions Jermaine is on YouTube if you're over there maybe suggest where to find lists of top 40 hits but my first Stop would be my streaming service and also Google. Uh, so uh, Charlie says, all my tracks are disappearing from my software. Help. I hope it's not, they're not disappearing in front of your eyes. That'd be really bad news. Let's talk about software and the way your music is organized in software because so many people don't understand this. It's not hard to understand, but if you don't understand it, it can be really strange when you can't figure out what's going on with it. So let's have a look now um, at this particular piece of software I've got here, Serato, but it's very similar in all DJ software. And I'll talk to you about how your DJ software organizes your music. So this is a finder window in my Mac. This would be called Windows Explorer in your Windows computer. In this finder window, on my Mac computer, I have a folder called music. This folder here is one that's added by the operating system. It's on all Macs. It's, on, it's called my music on a, on a Windows computer. And in this my music folder, I've got a folder where I keep my DJ music. I call it demo music because it's demos I use when I'm teaching here at Digital DJ Tips. So inside here, this is all the music that I DJ with, right? All in one folder, all just sat there, flat. No, no organization, no nothing. And this is how I strongly recommend you organize your music as a DJ. If you really do wanna have separate folders and stuff, I would go as far as to say, have a folder for each year. So at the beginning of the year, add a new folder inside your music folder. Um, I don't suggest you call yours demo music, you probably call yours my DJ music or something. And then each year have a folder and then fill it up and when the new year comes, add a new one. But I wouldn't even bother doing that. Have it all in one place, that's the important thing. And uh, that's where mine is. Now when you go to your DJ software and add your music to your DJ software, here's my music, I'm gonna just close down this Serato video thing so you can see more of my library. When I have my music in the DJ software here, the way I got it into the DJ software, and it's slightly different for all DJ software, but not very different, is that you go and find your music. So in my instance, it's gonna be in my music folder. There it is, demo music. And you just drag it into your DJ software. Here in this instance, I drag it to all music. And it all appears down here. And this is where people start to get confused. Because people think that once they've added music to their DJ software in that way, they can go back to their finder and move it or delete it. They could go back to here, and this is the music that I just added to the DJ software. I could delete this. Let's say that I dragged music into my DJ software here from my downloads folder because I just downloaded it from somewhere, or off my desktop, or off a external hard drive. Just because you've dragged it into your DJ software, it doesn't mean that you can unplug the hard drive, delete the stuff from your desktop, move it from the folder that it was in when you told your DJ software about it. And the reason for this is the big thing people don't understand. Your DJ software never copies your music into itself when you add it to the software. It simply adds to its own database or its own directory the details of where to find that music. So in other words, when I see a piece of music, see I've got this Coldplay track here, right? I've got it highlighted in the middle here. When I see this piece of music here and I drag it onto a deck and load it, it's not loading from my DJ software. My DJ software is saying, okay, Phil wants to load this track here. Where, where was it when Phil introduced it to me, when Phil, Phil imported it? Ah, it was in that folder, in the music folder called Demo Music. I'll go look for it there. And if it isn't there, then this won't load and it'll say, can't find track, track disappeared. And you can check this in all DJ software by just going to the location column. There's always a location column that you can look at and it'll show you where that music is. And so in this software, it's here. 
So I'll just move it down a bit so we can see it. I'll move it down to here. So here's the location of all the music. And you can see that this particular track is in my Phil Music Demo Music folder. If I go and move that from there, it won't be available. So the absolute rule and the thing that will stop this going wrong for you is put your music in one place, always, and then tell your DJ software about it by introducing it, by importing it, and then never move it from that place ever again. That's where your music lives, end of story. If you're downloading music, if you're copying music from external drives, if you're ripping music into iTunes, pull it all out from all those places and put it into your one folder that's your DJ music. And then that is the folder you tell your DJ software about. Your DJ software won't import a piece of music twice. It's fine to just import the whole folder again if you can't be bothered looking at the ones you've just added every week or whatever, but don't ever move the music. So what I suspect has happened for you is that you've moved the music outside of your DJ software and it can't find it anymore. That's almost certainly what's going on there. Um, so, Charlie, I hope that helps you over on Facebook. Um, there is actually one exception nowadays which makes this harder to teach, unfortunately, which is if you're using Rekordbox and you're using their cloud service where it's got Dropbox integration, it will, if you let it, copy music into there and stuff like that. So that's something for another day. Um, right, hello to Atomic VR. Hello to Mr. Dubs. Have a good two weeks off, uh, Phil. Thank you very much, Mr. Dubs. Um, hello to Tony. Uh, so, Cabes, what is the best way to connect CDJ 3000s using Ethernet or USB when using a computer? I've heard of both and I'm confused by which one is best. Uh, for your information, I've just finished your great book. Thanks. Right, okay, so Cabes, here is the Pioneer DJ CDJ 3000 setup. If you want to use CDJ 3000s with DJ software, Serato for instance, then you can plug them with a USB drive directly into Serato. And that way, it will recognize two of these, three of these, four of these if you want, and you can use them to DJ with your Serato decks and you get all clever stuff on the screens from Serato and so on. And that is fine, that works absolutely fine. It's called HID mode. When you put them together with an ethernet cable, you're connecting the units so that they all see each other for, for when you're using them with a USB drive plugged in here or here. And so without doing that, you can't plug one USB in and load the tracks onto here or see the waveforms across them or have the BPM on here tie in with the BPMs of your tracks. So Ethernet is a good way of adding these together to make them into kind of like one big unit for the way they're primarily designed to work, which is with a USB drive or an SD card plugged in here. Also, it's a great way of getting the internet into them because these are starting to get cloud features now. But for plugging in quickly to a laptop, USB is absolutely fine. And the only thing you might need is some kind of USB hub because maybe your laptop is like the one I've got here. This is just a little, uh, a little um, uh, MacBook Air and it's only got two sockets on the side of it. So I can't, you know, once I've got my power cable and my controller plugged in, I've got, I'm assuming I have, I've got no room for anything else and I certainly can't plug two um, CDJ 3000s in. So a little hub. Now, Serato will say, oh, you've got to use a powered hub. You've got to use one that plugs into the wall. I've always found it works fine with non-powered, cheapo hubs. Um, it, maybe it's down to the quality of the laptop you're plugging in. I don't know, but um, that's the easiest way of doing it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how I would use them in those two circumstances. I'd use one with USB when I'm using it with um, third-party DJ software, uh, and the other way I'd use with, you, with um, SD cards and USBs. Now, having said that, you can, once you've got them etherneted together, I'm pretty sure, plug your um, USB laptop into the mixer and use export mode on Rekordbox, which is the software, of course, that these, these are designed to work with primarily because they're, they're, it's the same company. And that's a bit different because then you're using the CDJs instead of plugging in a little USB drive or an SD card, you're just using your computer like a big hard drive. Um, there's lots of ways effectively of doing it, but that's the, the way I always think of the, the different ways. Right, let's grab a, another live question. Uh, this, <laughs> there's lots of love for, love for Amsterdam going on in the chat today. We do have a lot of Dutch um, 
cohort here. Um, so let's now grab one from Tony, who says, I'm gonna sign up for your Tractor Pro course. Good idea, Tony. Um, I'd like to get the S4 Mark III, but as it's five years old, maybe something new will come out later this year. Maybe I'll wait and start studying in the meantime. Well, two things here I would always say, Tony. One, if you wanna do it, do it now. Forget what comes out tomorrow. Uh, but two, I'm pretty sure there's no other tractor controllers coming out anytime soon. The tractor control S4 Mark III offers a really immersive, good experience with tractor. It's got all the controls you want. It's really neat the way it's got its little motorized jog wheels and stuff as well. I would go for it straight away, Tony, and not hold off um, for sure. Um, this is from someone on Facebook on our group who says, I really need advice on Box 6. I'm still on the latest version of Box 5 and I don't like the idea of having to pay a subscription. I'm not sure what the benefits really are because there are so many different ones. If you're using a DJ controller, that unlocks Rekordbox 6 core version, then you can still use it for free. You will need to update your database because it's a different database on six to five, but you will get all the new features of Rekordbox 6 going forward, uh, but just not the advanced, advanced features because they are in Rekordbox 6 Pro and Creative Plans. However, Rekordbox 6 core, which is the one that's unlocked by all the current Rekordbox gear, is very, very good. And so I wouldn't actually, if it were me, hold back of, um, in upgrading to Rekordbox 6. 5 will never be upgraded again, so it's going to become obsolete. Whereas 6 core, which is the free version, if you like, in inverted commas, um, is going to be kept up to date. And it's not like Serato DJ Lite which really is cut down DJ software, and you really do want to upgrade if you've got Serato DJ Lite to Serato DJ Pro. Rekordbox 6 Core has probably got most of what most people need. There are a few things missing, and who knows, over time they might add new features that are only in the higher versions, who can tell? But at the moment, I would say there's no real issue there, and you're not going backwards by upgrading from five to six, even if you don't want the paid version of six. I agree. I think there should be an option to buy Rekordbox outright, and it's just the way it's going, unfortunately. Serato is prohibitively expensive now to buy outright. And um, you know there are some routes where it really, really will cost you a lot of money for Serato, for instance. Uh, and it's a shame, but people want you on a subscription. They just want you on a subscription. It's just how it's gone and how it's going. Uh, right. What should, we be, what should we be doing, says Midnight Wolf, to protect our hearing when we're DJing? Uh, the last concert I went to has got me thinking about this. I often tell this story, but have you seen how messy this place is? If you could see what I've been doing for the last, well, since the 9th of January when I got back from our Christmas break, what I've been doing is making this new course, right? And I've been filming one or two lessons a day for the last five weeks. And I ha I've just locked the office and left at the end of every filming session. I haven't tidied, I haven't vacuumed, I haven't put anything back in boxes. There's papers everywhere. If I look over here, I'll tell you what I can see. A big pile of leads, a dusting cloth for making the controllers look clean, and some packets that had some cables in them. Uh, <laughs> everywhere you look in this office, and there's piles of controllers everywhere, because I've been like, oh, I need to teach on that put it down. Oh, I want to teach on that now, put it down. Um, let me show you. Let me show you what this has ended up like. I'm off camera now, grabbing this. These have been piling up and up and up and up and up. These are the notes from, from the filming session I've just done. Every lesson has got its own page of notes about relocating lost files and what's that one? importing into Serato video. Uh, honestly, I've literally, because I, I, like to, I like to go through our old lessons and I like to go through the book and I like to go through uh, other videos and stuff online and see all the stuff that people are missing about this stuff where like we're teaching Serato at the moment, right? Um, and then compile it into like a Bible, the best, the best teaching in the world, right? And then that is all written down properly. And then just before I go live, I take a big Sharpie, a piece of A4 paper, and I write the 10 big points I want to teach. And then that goes just off camera here. And then I, that's what I glance down to when I'm teaching. And I've got these piles of this stuff everywhere. When I get back after my, my holiday, I'm going to spend at least a day and probably two just tidying everything away again 
I'm putting a big pile of stuff in the back of the car to take to our warehouse where we keep the things we're not using day to day. Um, but yeah, sorry about the mess on that wide camera angle. I did actually try and make it a bit neater before going live today. Um, so, a bit of a diversion there, people. But anyway, um, what should we be doing for ear protection while DJing? The last concert I went to has me thinking. Um, I went to a gig on a boat. Uh, it was on the River Thames, going up and down the River Thames, past the Houses of Parliament, with a friend of mine who was DJing a Christmas party. And this boat was made of metal, and he had a very loud sound system in there, and he obviously didn't have any issues with killing his own ears. And I couldn't get off this bloody boat, and he had the music so loud. And I got off that boat, and the next day my ears were ringing. They were still ringing a month later. I thought I'd done them. Um, but then I got on a plane to go to the NAMM show in, uh, in um, Vegas, uh, Vegas, in Los Angeles. And going up in the plane, ping, my ears just popped and cleared. And honestly, I, I felt closer to God that day, and I probably was, 38,000 feet closer. I just felt so blessed that it had fixed itself. And to, to this day, I, I just feel that was my wake-up call. Uh, and I always have earplugs when I'm going anywhere loud. So the first thing is earplugs. However, when you're DJing, earplugs that you buy in the chemist that just block your ears, so that's no good, is it? So you can get musicians' earplugs, and musicians' earplugs have got a hole through the middle. So basically, they are turning it down because the hole getting into your ears is now smaller, but you're still getting, and you're still getting the bass, and you're still getting the mid range, it's just lower. And you can even get ones nowadays where you've got a little control on it to decide how loud or quiet you want it to be. So if it gets really loud, you can turn them down a bit more. And then you can get custom ear inserts as well, where they, you can either get a kit to, to do it at home or you go to one of their centers. And they put some kind of like foam stuff in your ear and it molds to the shape of your ear and then they pull it out and send it off to the lab and they, they send you earplugs that have been made to, to work with your ears uh, and completely encase your ear apart from that hole through them. They're called musician's earplugs and they're really, really good. I'd say if you're gonna be DJing more than once a week um, for any period of time, get some made. They're a little bit disconcerting because you get these two earplugs back and they're a different shape and you're like, I don't want my ears to be a different shape. I want to be symmetrical. But unfortunately, it don't work like that. We're not symmetrical. And you find that out when you get earplugs that have been custom made for you. Anyway, earplugs are the way forward. The other way forward is turn your gear down when you're not mixing. So here, big monitor speakers in this studio. It's a massive one there, a massive one there. Um, when I'm DJing in here, they're loud. They're in my ears, they're loud. Um, I've got my headphones on to monitor as well. So I'm monitoring in one. I've got the monitor speakers here. But just like I've always done in clubs, I will turn down the monitors when I don't need them. So in other words, you turn them up to mix and turn them down when you don't want them. And that way you're not subjecting your ears to that solid pounding all the time. Um, so it's definitely worth protecting your hearing. You only get one set of ears, as they say. Um, so right, this one is from... Uh, this one is from Am555, who is another person asking about tractor. Awesome to have so many people asking about tractor today. Can you tell me if it's possible to connect a tractor control S4 Mark I and a control X1 Mark II together at the same time using one laptop? Um, and if so, what is required to do so? Many thanks, Brian. Uh, you don't need anything, just plug them both in. Your software will recognize them both and you're, you're good to go. Tractor can map the different controls if you want to change, you know, have the, um, so the Tractor Control S4 is a proper controller like this. I mean, it isn't exactly like this, but it's a controller, mixer, two decks. And the Tractor Control, well, it's got four channels and two decks. The Tractor Control X1 is a long, thin controller that gives you extra control. So for instance, you might wanna have that one controlling, I don't know, extra stuff on the effects or the sampler or whatever. Um, it's easy to map the controls on extra controllers to do exactly what you want. But the controller should, with, with minimal setup, recognize them both straight off. So no problem at all there uh, with that. Um, any news on the Recordbox mobile app launch date, says Simon. No, Recordbox are doing an app for your phone and for your uh, tablet. And we don't know when it's coming out, but I keep asking them. And as soon as it does, we will let you know. But it's going to be quite exciting to see that. Um, 
So the Rockus says, and DJ Ginormous saying, what's up, you've only just returned and you're going on holiday for two more weeks. I've only just returned, what are you talking about? Been back for six weeks. Um, yep, I am. I'm, I've, I've, I've spent the last six weeks making this Serato course. I've worked far too hard uh, and I'm gonna take two weeks off now. Well, I would say one week not in the studio and then one week off, uh, but both of those things are gonna happen and I am not guilty about it. Right, let's grab another question. Uh, this is from, um, this is from Tony. Uh, I was going to sign up for your tractor course, more tractor stuff, uh, but it's old. Maybe something new will come out later this year. Oh no, that's the same question. Tony, don't cut and paste your questions. That happens. Ask once. Uh, right, next question. This is from, um, this is from, uh, Fresh Boy Future, do you think it's okay in this day and age to only play the dirty version so I don't have to worry about also getting the clean version of a track? No, I don't think it's okay. I wouldn't want my four-year-old daughter exposed to uh, dirty versions of tracks. So no, I don't think it's okay. You've got to judge it gig by gig. Mind you, having said that, um, we uh, lived in Spain when my kids were very, very young. Uh, we live in, for those of you who don't know how, how Digital DJ Tips kind of works, we, we're in a place called Gibraltar, which is right on the very south of Spain, but it's a British place. And just over the border there is Spain, and we used to live just over the border there. So my kids went to a Spanish nursery, and of course, they speak Spanish. So to them, the English pop music is just English pop music, it's just sounds. And so they, the kids always used to listen to the, um, uncensored versions of songs, like totally accidentally, really. So it's quite, quite charming when they used to come home um, singing, you know, <sighs> stuff that you wouldn't expect a four-year-old to sing. But anyway, no, um, I think there's a divide here between Europe and the States. I think the States gets a bit more sensitive about this stuff. I don't think Europe really cares that much. and I don't know where you are, but I would say always, um, you know, cut your cloth to fit your audience. Um, there's an easy way of getting around this issue if you've got songs that are not the censored versions and you're worried that uh, it's going to cause an issue, which is all DJ software has got a sensor function. Uh, on Serato, I think it's this button here if I remember rightly. I can't remember actually, it's one of these little buttons around here. Um, it plays it backwards. Or well, maybe it's not on here. Maybe you can't do it from the screen. I can't remember. Uh, this is the guy who's teaching a course at the moment about it. Um, no, it's not that. So anyway, you've got a button that you can press when the track's playing and it will play it backwards. Yeah, it was that one. Yeah, I was right. Hey, I do, I do know my stuff. So you, you can see the track playing there. And you can see as I'm pressing that, it's going backwards. But it's not just going backwards. It's jumping to where it would have been before I pressed the button. And so what's happening there is I can press that button just when it's coming up to a curse word and it won't play the curse word because it will play backwards for a second and then when I take my hand off, it will have gone past the curse word. So that's how it works. And most DJ gear has a sensor button in. By the way, the reason I couldn't play any music then was that uh, would get taken down because of <sighs> Facebook. Uh, right, let's grab another question. Um, and we have got lots and I have got probably about 10 minutes because my voice. Um, let's, uh, let's grab this one from uh, Syndicate. Another idea about why, why your tracks might be disappearing, that question we had earlier. Um, this is that you could have the setting removed, uh, the setting to remove them from the playlist once played. Yeah, maybe, but I imagine, I imagine that that's not the case. But yeah, good, good, good question, it could be that. Apparently there's a bit of an audio lag on Twitch. Nothing we can do about that, folks. Um, sorry about that, but uh, nothing we can do about that. It's normally all right, I think. Um, this is from, so many to choose from, as always is the case. What's the deal with memory queue, says Austin. It's mentioned in my record box and DDJ1000 instruction videos, but with little detail. Is memory queue used much? So the short answer is no, don't worry about it. The longer answer is that memory queue came before hot cues. And memory queue is a very crude way of marking points on a track in record box and also on CDJs and USB systems. And you can mark like the beginning, 
the beginning of the breakdown, the mix out point and stuff. And then you can cycle through those with some buttons at the top of CDJs, even ones that haven't got hot cues in. But for me, they're superseded by the hot cue buttons for sure. So for instance, I don't know how good our camera is at zooming in on this. Here's our CDJ setup. The memory cue area is this area here, where you can just save, recall and delete cues and loops by cycling through them. And it'll just go to the next one and wait. And that's it. Whereas the hot cues at the top here, are great. You know, you can set them and you can jump to them and you can DJ with them and you can use them to chop up tracks and so on. You've got eight of them and they're right there all together. So this area here is pretty much legacy. This area here is for when gear didn't have all the nice hot cues on it. Uh, that's, that's my opinion on that. So I wouldn't worry about the memory cues. Um, that said, our very own James Hype does use memory cues as well as hot cues. And he said, well, they're there, so why not use them? So he does use them for two slightly different things, but no. I'd say, um, I'd say you don't need to worry about that. Uh, right, so let's um, get an update on the Ethernet versus USB um, question. And this is uh, the techiest person I know who's always right on these things. Thank you as ever, Mixmaster G. Only, says Mixmaster G, on the CDJ3000s, these ones, not the older ones, uh, with a V10, which is a very, very high-end mixer, or the it's the um, DJM Nexus 900 uh, mixer, 900 Nexus 2, again, very high-end Pioneer mixes, only on that particular set of setups. You can use USB to the mixer and then Ethernet from the mixer to the players for HID, but that's the only kit that will allow that. Right, okay, so you could have it all Etherneted up and have one USB into the mixer there uh, and then DJ that way, the way I was describing, but other than that, you need extra USBs into every unit. So thank you for that, as ever, Mixmaster G. Um, so, uh, oh, and here's another great idea why music might be disappearing from your streaming service, from your um, DJ software. It could be that you're DJing with a streaming service. And if you are, the streaming service has lost the licensing for the particular tracks, so they're just not showing a good reason to buy the tracks that are really important to you. Peter says, hi, Phil. Do you think any of the hardware companies are going to put out any higher quality iPad controllers? I like the look of the DJ app, but the compatible controllers look like cheap toys. Well, they're not all. Like the DJ app, I know I keep showing it, but uh, Algorithm's DJ app will work absolutely fine with this. So it's not like all controllers um, that work with Algorithm's DJ app are toys. Um, but the ones that have got the word DJ printed on them and the ones that are designed primarily for using that software. Yes, they tend to be smaller, cheaper controllers. But if you look on the algorithm website, you'll see that they've got all kinds of compatibility from all kinds of stuff right up to really big controllers. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you want to use algorithm software, go look at the um, compatibility. And actually, it's quite easy to map as well. It's one of the pieces of software that even if you've got something that isn't um, so officially supported, you might be able to get to work with it. But yes, it is one of the weaknesses of um, DJ Pro AI on an iPad that, you know, the, the big manufacturers, so Serato, uh, Pioneer DJ and Denon DJ and so on, their gear and the software, they've thought so hard about the way it works with hardware and about getting really, getting, you know, almost you, you want the hardware, so you have to choose the software to get the hardware, that kind of vibe, whereas Algorithm is purely a software company. And so their connection necessarily is a little bit looser with hardware and they have to piggyback on the back of hardware that's made for other software and so on. So that is one of the weaknesses when you're just a software company, uh, for sure. Right, one or two more and then I'm out of here. Uh, this comes from uh, Luis who just says, have a great vacation. Thanks, Luis. Um, this one then, uh, it comes from, uh, oh, you're, a, lot, a lot of people discussing USB versus laptop DJing. I love it. Um, yeah, they've both got their pros and cons. I'll let you carry on doing that discussion, that discussion, uh, that discussion over there on your own. Um, so Jazzy Pete Lindemann, I'm enjoying your mobile DJ mixing course. And I'm just wondering if you have suggestions for the next course. If you're loving the mixing course, then another mixing course might be the way to go. So our other mixing courses cover all kinds of DJ um, styles. So for instance, this is the mobile mixing course, our most current one. Um, if you 
if you like the idea of mixing open format, but you want to go a bit more hip hop, Je Jeff's course is fantastic. If you uh, want to go a bit more house, the house mixing course will stop you doing boring beat mixes forevermore. If you want to go big room and learn some real wow techniques, James's course is fantastic. If you want to learn to do the best DJ routines in the world, learn from a DMC winner, DJ Angelo. Um, if you want to learn big room festival DJing, Luke is your man. And if you're totally new to mixing on digital gear, if you're just a, a, a CDJ DJ or even a vinyl DJ, and you're just like, wow, what is all this stuff? What are these cues? What are these loops? What is this key mixing malarkey? Um, what is this sync mixing across four decks and all that? Then the Mixing Power Skills course is our best introduction to all the power skills that have been added on to good old fashioned beat mixing. And Mixing Mastery gives you a whole load of extra stuff to do once you've mastered the stuff in Mixing Power Skills. It's like an add-on course to Mixing Power Skills. So there's a quick look at those mixing courses. Uh, and then of course, let's not forget, just because he was tucked at the bottom of the screen, DJ Rasp, another award-winning DJ, is all about scratching, but doing it in a way that will keep your average crowd happy in a bar, in a lounge, in a venue where they're not there to watch you being a scratch DJ. So if you wanna learn how to do that kind of mixing, you know, any of these will be good for you for certain. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. Let's get one more question then from the list. Sorry if I couldn't get to your question today, but look, come back in two weeks time, we'll carry on there. Um, lots of you just chatting about hearing, it's good to hear. Um, this is our final question then, and I'm gonna uh, show a piece of hardware here. How much better is the Numark Mixstream Pro uh, now that it works with Serato DJ, says PH on YouTube. So I've got the Numark Mixstream Pro here. The Numark Mixstream Pro is, has turned out to be a very popular controller. Um, I, I quite like this. I don't think the speakers down here are a particularly good idea because it's where your hands kind of rest when you're DJing, which is a little bit strange, but look, this is a reasonably cheap DJ device. It's got a built-in screen, built-in computer, so you don't need to plug any laptop into this. You can plug this in, and as long as you've got a subscription with Tidal, for instance, uh, you can uh, immediately, over Wi-Fi, pull in all your Tidal music and all the other music in the world and DJ straight on this unit with it. It can control DJ lighting, including your Philips Hue lights or your Nanoleaf lights at home to give you in an instant light show. It's just a really, really good DJ unit. And they've just upgraded this to also work with Serato DJ Pro, which means you can use it with a laptop and software as well, which is just one of those things that makes it so much more flexible because it's good to be able to DJ with software. You get stems, you get a sampler, you get all stuff which you don't get on that kind of standalone hardware gear. Even the best in the world doesn't have stems, doesn't have a sampler. So I think having Serato on there is a big win for that unit. However, Serato, as we've already discussed, is expensive unless you want to subscribe to it. But the other thing they've added is Amazon Prime um, Music or Amazon Music Unlimited or whatever it's called. Uh, and so that's another streaming service. Now it's only on the Newmark Mixstream Pro Plus, which is because they've had to put a new little chip in to work with Amazon. Um, but if you're an Amazon Music user anyway, it's just another streaming service. That's, I'd say, I don't know, but I would say that's less important than having the Serato compatibility. Also works with Virtual DJ, by the way. Uh, but it's a great little unit. It's doing, it's doing really well, quite rightfully. Listen, people, I've got to go. Um, do tune in again in two weeks' time when we'll have, hopefully, um, news on the launch of the Serato DJ Pro 3 Made Easy course that I've personally been remaking for the last six weeks. Can't wait to bring you that course. Um, I'm gonna take a couple of weeks break. Um, I will be around answering your queries on YouTube inside the Student Hub group for you students. I will be around for the next week doing that and then I'm having a proper week off. Um, but I'll see you again in a couple of weeks time for another live show. Thanks very much everyone for being here today. All that's left for me to say as ever is get good, get out there, make the moments and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks time from hopefully a much tidier studio and hopefully with my voice properly back. Till then, bye bye.